Welcome to Kingdom Now. I'm John Carmichael, and today we are going to be releasing a powerful revelation concerning your marriage. And we want to believe God with you. We're going to be looking at a story found in the book of Genesis, especially chapter 29, in which Jacob was married to Rachel and Leah. And the marriage between Jacob and Leah, it had started out rough. It was not destined in the natural for success. But I want to show you from the Word of God how that God turned that around. God wants to turn your marriage around. And I believe over the next few minutes and the next few programs, you're going to get some information of how to walk into a miracle in your marriage. Maybe you're not even married and you're believing God for a spouse. You're going to get information that I believe is going to help you pick the right spouse, be able to have information that God can use in your life to turn your marriage around or to give you the marriage that you're believing God for. So you want to make sure that you're watching, get a pencil and piece of paper, and it's going to be a powerful revelation in your life. So don't go away. Kingdom Now. We'll be right back. Do you expect to receive the power of God with a hard heart? Do you expect your faith to work with a hard heart? Hebrews chapter 6 says that when you and I develop hardness of heart, that that is an evil heart of unbelief. Hardness of heart is considered, according to Hebrews chapter 6, an evil heart. Therefore, you cannot receive help from the Lord. Now, do you want to be considered to have an evil heart? Divorce was given to those people to whom God says, you have a hard heart. I'm not saying this. God is saying this. Jesus said Moses only gave that as an a option to people who were hard-hearted. Now, do you believe that a hard-hearted person can receive any help from the Lord? Do you believe that God is going to help you save your marriage when you have a hard heart, friends? It's not going to happen. No. He goes on to say, verse 9, I say to you that whoever, this is what Jesus is saying. Jesus said, I say to you that whoever divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another, commits adultery. And whoever marries her who is divorced commits adultery. And his disciples, and I want you to notice what their reaction was to what Jesus had just said. Their reaction, verse 10, you got to love these guys, these disciples Jesus had. They said, if it's the case that a man um, with a man and his wife their reaction, it's better not to marry. This so affected them, what Jesus said. They said, Jesus, if this is true, what you're saying is that a man should not divorce his wife unless there's been adultery involved. Their reaction was, it's better not to marry. I know people who say, and they come into agreement with the disciples, that they believe, you know what, if, if God looks at it that way, if God really has this type of attitude, they looked at Jesus and said, Jesus, if this is true, that I can only get divorced because of um, adultery, then it's better for me not to marry. What you see there is that the attitude of Jesus was conveyed. They understood what he meant. They understood that divorce for any reason... Divorce was it, with any reason is not consistent with New Testament theology. It's not consistent with it. Now, Paul is going to give us another insight into this. And I want you to see in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, he's going to talk about this, er, this, uh, this topic of marriage and divorce. In verse 10, 1 Corinthians 7, Verse 10, he says, now to the married, he's talking to the married, I command. Now this is important when you're looking at Paul's writings. He says, yet not I, but the Lord. 
Now, Apostle Paul is going to begin to talk about a command. And he's going to clarify this for us so we don't get this confused. He's going to say, I'm not commanding this, but God is commanding that a woman, or I'm sorry, a wife, not depart from her husband. Verse 11. But even if she does depart, let her remain unmarried and be, or be reconciled back to her husband. And a husband is not to divorce his wife. But to the rest I, I, not the Lord, say that if any brother has a wife who does not believe and she is willing to leave him, let him not divorce her. And a woman who has a husband who does not believe, and if he is willing to live with her, let her not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean, but now they are holy. Verse 15, but if the unbeliever departs, now listen to this. This is who the, the departing that he's talking about earlier, the unbeliever. But if the unbeliever de depart, let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases, but as God has called us to peace. For how do you know, O wife, whether you will save your husband? Or how do you know, O husband, whether you will save your wife? So what is he saying there? Because people get this confused about, well, if he departs or if one of them departs, then uh, up there he says, I'm telling you, don't divorce, but if one does remain unmarried, what is he saying there? He's saying that if the one that is an unbeliever departs, let's say you're married to an unbeliever today, and that person you're married to wants to leave you, they want to divorce you, Paul is saying here that I'm going to, or Paul is saying that you can let them go. You can divorce in that case. And you're not under any obligation and, and under any fault in that case because the unbeliever. So we see now two New Testament uh, permissions for divorce. Number one is in the area of marital unfaithfulness, that's an uh, adultery. And number two is in the area of an unbeliever. You're married to an unbeliever and the unbeliever wants to leave, then you allow them to go. Now, people always want to go to the extreme of what if I'm married to a person and there's physical abuse. Well, the reason that would fall along the lines of this is a person who is in physical physically abusing you, beating you, beating your children, or some type of other sexual misconduct, we, that person is not a believer. A person is not a believer because of what they say. They're a believer because there's a lifestyle that backs that up. And a person who is beating you I don't care if they go to church. That doesn't mean they're saved. That doesn't mean they're a Christian. They would be in the category of an unbeliever, and therefore a divorce can take place in that case because of the, of the attitude and the action on the, other, on the other party. Do you understand that? So we're not saying that they have to be an unbeliever only by confession. They have to be an unbeliever by confession and action, by attitude and action. And at that point, the New Testament says for divorce. But here's what I want to, to say to you, is that other than these reasons that we see here in the Bible, divorce is not the preferred option. In fact, I want to tell you today that the covenant is so strong that even if you're married to an unbeliever and the unbeliever wants to stay with you, you are to remain married to them. That doesn't mean you let them abuse you. That doesn't mean that you let them uh, sexually abuse your children or anything to that, not saying that at all. But what I am saying to you is that your attitude, your heart has got to be, divorce is not an option. I have people who say, well, 
I don't like how we got started, or I don't like how they act right now, or they're not treating me right, or they're not uh, doing uh, what I think they ought to do. And we're not, again, we're not talking about the extreme here. I'm talking about the middle of the road marriages where people are unhappy, they feel unloved, they feel like they're, they're, that their marriage doesn't have this idea of romance, and so they're ready to quit. Or maybe they're starting to like other people. Friends, I'm going to tell you, if you want God to help you in your marriage, there has to be an attitude change inside of you that you just begin to say, you know what, I'm, I, I hate divorce. I'm in this marriage, whether I wanted to be or not, whether this was my preferred marriage or not. Because some of you, you married a person and maybe you liked how they used to be, but they've changed. After years, people begin to change. And you say, well, that's not the person I married. Well, friends, Jacob didn't mar want to marry Leah, but God worked and honored the marriage from Leah. God can work in your marriage if you will let him. If you will set the anchor point like Jacob did when he chose not to put Leah away, but in fact began to love her, and then began to honor her and prefer her, I believe that's one of the reasons why God honored Jacob is because Jacob honored his marriage, got on the same page as God, and God began to work in the name of the Lord. How? Because Jacob honored God. When you work with God and His Word, and you begin to say, Father, I see in your Word that you hate divorce. I see in your word that unless there's been adultery or an unbeliever wants to leave me, then I'm to stay married. I'm going to honor that. Now look at what a promise that I want to give you is this. Numbers chapter 11 verse 23. It says, The Lord said to Moses, Has the Lord's hand, His ability and power become short, short thwarted, or inadequate? You shall now see whether my word will come to pass in your life or not. Now, what was God saying there? I'm not shifting gears. I want to share with you this principle. The principle was this, that if they honored God's word on the subject, God said, my hand is not short or inadequate. What you need to realize is this. If you will honor God's word concerning divorce. If you will honor God's word and God's attitude about your marriage, that he wants it to work. He wants it to last. He wants it to become something great. If you will honor the word of God, you will see and find out that God's power is not short. God's ability is not inadequate. That God has the strength to honor his word in your marriage if you will honor His Word in your marriage. That's what I'm talking about. When I talk about setting the anchor point, that you're not going to run to divorce as an option. You're not going to throw away your marriage because it's gotten uncomfortable, or maybe even by your own words, unbearable. But you're going to say, Father, I don't see that I have a biblical reason for divorce. I don't see that in your Word. So therefore, because you hate divorce, I hate divorce because your word says that I'm to stay in this marriage. I'm going to honor your word and I'm going to stay in your marriage. Now, friends, that is not a sentence to an unhappy life, but rather it is a key to the open door of God's power. That's what God said to Moses. If you will honor my word, you will find that my arm is not short. My power is not inadequate. And I want to release a word of hope to some of you because as you hear this word and you say, man, I'm in a marriage and it's hard. I'm in a marriage and it's unbearable. And you're wanting me to set an attitude to stay in this marriage? John, you're wanting me to, to stay in this? Yeah, I am. But I want you to stay in it with hope because what I want to tell you is this. If you will take God's attitude, if you will come into alignment with God's Word,
You're watching Kingdom Now. The message in which you're listening to today is called Lion Ugly, the Miracle Marriage. And I want to give this message to you free of charge. Email us at info at evangelnorth.net. That's I-N-F-O at evangelnorth.net. Give us your name and address and we will rush a copy of this message to you that could be a blessing to you or maybe you know someone whose marriage is in trouble and they need help. I believe that information found within this message can turn that marriage around. You can also call us at 502-413-0115, dial extension 2, and leave your name and information and we will give this to you. But also, for a gift of any size, if you believe in the message of Kingdom Now and can help us, we want to also, in addition to giving you the message, The Miracle Marriage, we want to also give you a book called uh, Seven Characteristics of a Godly Marriage. It's written by Dr. Bob Rogers. And if you will give us that information, your information at the email address or by phone, we're going to give this to you for a gift of any size. It's a way of saying thank you for supporting Kingdom Now. Now, Kingdom Now can be seen here at 21.3 The Light, or you can go online at WBNA21.com. Click the light and then scroll down the ministries. You'll see Kingdom Now with Evangel North Church. And you can share this with people. And I encourage you to do it. Let people know about the program. Let people know on your Facebook, your Twitter, whatever social media that you have in your life. Because if it's been a blessing to you, let it be a blessing to somebody else. So help us share the word. Kingdom Now, present it to your family and friends. And we want to thank you for watching. If you will take God's attitude, if you will come into alignment with God's word, friend, the supernatural power of God will begin to be released in your marriage. And God will turn something around that is ugly, that is nasty, that is hopeless, that is full of despair. And friends, he will turn that thing around. You will find that the power of God gets released when you come into agreement with his word. When you set that anchor point in your marriage and you say, God, you hate divorce, I hate divorce. Your word gives me a reason, a couple of reasons to divorce and I don't have that. So I'm staying in it because of your word. I'm not moving. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to throw this away. Friends, that's not a sentence to an unhappy life. That's not a sentence to a life that's unfulfilled. No, it's a key. It's a key to unlock the power of God. To unlock the supernatural power of God. I've seen it happen. I know somebody that was in the midst of a marriage in which they, there was uh, unfaithfulness. Their spouse had cheated on them. This wasn't the first time. It was the second time even. And they're in the midst of a second go-around with adultery with the spouse. And God began to say to them and began to share this with them and said, if you will fight for your marriage... You are on the side of God and the whole resources of heaven are available to you. That's what God said to Moses. That if they will honor the word of God, that the, all of the power of God will be released in, your li in their life. Friends, if you will fight for your marriage and get into alignment with God, you fall on God's side of the issue. And what I want to tell you is this is that you have at your disposal the entire resources of heaven. At your disposal is the, the power of God, the anointing of God, the angels of God, the authority of God gets released on you when you fight for your marriage. I know many people who have fought for their marriage alone where their spouse was not engaged and not interested. 
Can a marriage be saved like that? Absolutely. If you will fall on the line or in alignment with God and God's word, you will set an anchor point to say, I want to fight for my marriage because God fights for my marriage. I want to stand with my marriage because God stands with my marriage. You're going to have divorce as an option. You're going to allow that mindset to get inside of you. You're going to allow the culture to influence you. You're going to allow society to dictate to you what's right and wrong. Friends, God's not going to be able to help you. God's power is not going to be able to move in that marriage. But if you want God's power, the first thing you're going to do is set the anchor point in your marriage that you're not going anywhere. And friends, you're opening the door. You're opening the door that, like my friend said, that God spoke to him, the very resources of heaven are available. The very resources of heaven are available to you for God to move in your marriage if you'll set this anchor point. Number two, I want you to see that you have to identify a source of love. This is very important because if you don't understand the source of love, you're going to um, not realize what well to drink from. If you don't understand where to get love from, you're not going to be able to tap into God's kind of love. And, and here's what I mean by that. When you look at the marriage of Jacob and Rachel and compare it to the marriage of Jacob and Leah, we learn some things about Rachel. Rachel looked to Jacob, and I'm going to say mandrakes, and you'll look at this in just a moment of what those are. Rachel when she was looking at her marriage, she looked at it only from a natural standpoint. She looked to Jacob and she looked to Mandrake. So she looked to earthly things for her marriage. When you look at Leah, Leah looked to God. How do I know that? When Leah named her children, and you look at the names of her children, these were names that pointed to the goodness and the mercy and the kindness of God. When you look at Rachel and how she named her children, that was not so. When uh, Leah would worship God and she would keep praying, you see recorded in Genesis how that Leah kept focusing on God. She would ask God for children. She would pray for more sons and she would say, Father God, give me sons so that Jacob would love me. She thought that if she had sons that Jacob would love her, but I want you to notice where, she, where, where Leah is looking. Leah is looking to God to help her marriage. Rachel is not looking to God. Rachel looks to Jacob. In fact, one time Rachel traded Jacob to Leah for a night for some mandrakes, or it was a root that was thought to help women bear children. And so here you've got Rachel trying to have children. God has closed her womb. And she looks at the source of good things for her marriage. She's looking at it from Jacob. Come on, Jacob, come lay with me. She's dealing, wheeling and dealing with Leah for a night with Jacob. And then she begins to look to natural things. Mandrakes was thought to be Oh, that was a powerful revelation that I know that God is using in your life. And I'm just praying that it's been a blessing to you. And I know that it can be a blessing to many people. And I want to make something available to you. This message is entitled, Lion Ugly, The Miracle Marriage, in which Jacob and Leah had a marriage that was destined to fail, doomed to destruction, but yet somehow, someway, God turned it around. There's principles found within this message. Lion Ugly, the miracle mar marriage that God was able to, to give to you and I to turn our marriage around or maybe to give us information on who we're to choose if we're single. So I want to give this to you free of charge. I'm asking you if you would to email us, info, that's info at evangelnorth.net, info at evangelnorth.net, or you can call us, 502-413-0115. 
502-413-0115. Dial extension 2 and we will have someone to answer that phone or you can leave a message and what we will need is your name and address and we will be able to send this message to you lying ugly it can help you it can help your marriage or maybe you want to sow it into somebody else's life that can help them and so if you will contact us we will rush you this message and it'll be a great blessing now for those of you who can help us for a gift of any size I want to in addition to that I want to give you a book by Dr. Bob Rogers called Seven Characteristics of a Godly Marriage. This book has been influential in helping people. It will be a great guide to go right along with the message, Lying Ugly. This book that Pastor Bob wrote uh, is going to give you keys that's going to be able to help your marriage. And for a gift of any size, we're going to give this, we're going to send this to you. You can use the same information. Email us at info, that's info at evangelnorth.net, or call us, 502-413-0115, dial extension 2, leave us your name and address, and we will get these to you, and we want to thank you for supporting. Of course, you can also go online to give and give the same information. If you'll go to evangelnorth.net, evangelnorth.net, and click the online giving button, and if you will put in the notes... Uh, lying uh, Ugly, The Miracle Marriage, Lying Ugly, The Miracle Marriage, put in there that you watch the Kingdom Now show. We will know that you're giving for this, and we will give this to you, and it'll be a great blessing to your life. also want to encourage you to come out uh, to Evangel North Church, located in Clarksville, Indiana. Our address is 1732 Thames Drive. 1732 Thames Drive there in Clarksville. It's right off of the Veterans Parkway and Green Tree Boulevard. You'll recognize the Bass Pro Shop there in Clarksville. Our service times are Sunday at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. and Wednesday nights at 7. And we encourage you to come at Evangel North Church. We believe you belong. You'll see that phrase mentioned several times at the church. We just believe that God wants people to be able to come to a body of believers. And we believe that Evangel North will be a great blessing to you. Great ministries for you, for your family. Opportunities for you to activate your gifts, your talents, and your interests. For you to belong with small groups and begin to cultivate your walk with God at Evangel North. Again, we encourage you to come out Sundays and Wednesdays and it'll be a great blessing to you. It's been our honor to bring to you Kingdom Now. It's been Ministry of Evangel North Church and I know that it's been a great blessing to you. We encourage you to share this with people at Facebook, Twitter, your family, your friends. You can view it right here on uh, Channel 21.3 The Light. You can go online WBNA21.com Click on the light and then you can scroll down the ministries, view this program anytime that way. God bless you and thank you for watching Kingdom Now.